Lynn Mooney, Once Upon a Promise Darkness cloaked the miniature stone cottage. The autumn moon was full and bright. Thick, wiry tree branches and a deep, heavy fog consumed the view of the small home from the search party galloping by. Fiona counted at least six of the king's soldiers mounted on gray-white Andalusians, but the mist obscured further details as she watched from her window. Fiona, move away from the window. The elderly dwarf was at the table kneading the morning bread. Yeah, lazy, silly girl, and I need you to prepare the cookie dough. The teenager tilted her pretty head, flipped a lock of honey-brown hair, and partially rose from her stool. She had to bend down in order to move beneath the rafters. She reached for her apron, a mixing bowl, and the ingredients for dough. Crepitus, who are they looking for? They've been looking every night for months. The dwarf let out an angry grunt and began pounding the bread. I've told you every night. It's no concern of ours. Maybe we've seen something and we can help. Fiona poured spices from a glass jar into her cookie dough. Yeah, clumsy, silly girl, if you pay more attention to the important things, we'd both be better off. Way too much spice for cookies. Now start over and quit wasting the supplies. I can't afford you to be a numbskull. The soldiers are nothing for you to mind. She did mind, very much. The soldiers never performed their search by daylight. She wasn't the brightest girl, though Crepitus had tried to teach her how to read and write. Still, it seemed logical the soldiers would find it easier to see with the sun. The old baker was jovial by day, but when the search began, he became irritable and nearly impossible to be around. Fiona shrugged off her concern, dumped the contents of her bowl, and tried to start again. If the baked goods weren't ready in the morning when the bakery opened, they wouldn't earn the silver coin needed for dinner in the evening, and her stomach was already rumbling following the light supper they had eaten earlier. Still, she didn't complain. It had been an act of kindness when Crepitus had taken her in, when she was barely more than a babe. He never would speak of her parents, beyond informing her they had killed in a horrendous accident. Crepitus was the closest Fiona had to family, and he always held her at a distance, never letting her forget he didn't have to take her in. Go on, child, head off to bed with ye. No business being awake at this hour. But the cookies. Go, ye making a mess anyhow. Can I go to the bakery in the morning? The old man grumbled and waved her away. Fiona doubted his hand gesture was permissive. She nodded and headed to her room. The girl could almost touch all four walls with her fingertips from the center but at least she had a bed that accommodated the full length of her body. It was one of the very few accommodations Crepitus had made for her full human height. Fiona awoke with a start. She didn't usually wake before Crepitus yelled for her to get her lazy bones out of bed. Her room was pitch black, without so much as a window to allow the moonlight to enter. Her candle had long since burnt out. She heard a soft moan coming from the main room where the dwarf slept next to the hearth. She slipped her tattered dress over her chemise and headed in his direction. Crepitus was huddled in a ball, tossing back and forth under his light sheet. Fiona could see beads of feverish sweat on his forehead. He was rarely ill, and it frightened the young girl. She approached and laid a hand on the old dwarf's shoulder, surprised by the warmth of his skin. Get away before you make yourself sick, you silly girl. His voice was hoarse and weak. Get me some water before you go.